Today, we gather to honour those who have served in the Canadian Forces, RCMP, Provincial and Municipal Police Forces, essential workers, and first responders. They have chosen a life of self-sacrifice to serve others. They have chosen a life, like many Canadian families have, of service. Like many Canadian families, some of you have children, relatives and friends that have served or are serving. Some of you have family and friends who have paid the ultimate sacrifice. Our collective prayers and support are with you today and always. We are grateful for the Royal Canadian Legion Branch 632 here in Orleans for allowing us to record this service at the Orleans Cenotaph. This is a day of remembrance. This is a day of tears. This is a day for our country. This is a day for our armed forces. This is a day to remember and cry for our country and all countries, for our people and all people, for our soldiers and all soldiers. This is a day for us to recommit ourselves to justice, to recommit ourselves to peace. This is a day, as is every day, to remember. In our remembering and in our living, let us worship God. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 25 to 37. Who is my neighbor? Just then a lawyer stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? What do you read there? He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have given the right answer. Do this and you will live. But wanting to justify himself, he asked Jesus, and who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell into the hands of robbers who stripped him, beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a priest was going down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, while traveling near him, came near him, and when he saw him, he was moved with pity. He went to him and bandaged his wounds having poured oil and wine on them. Then he put him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said, Take care of him, and when I come back, I will repay you whatever more you spend. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? He said, the one who showed him mercy. Jesus said to him, go and do likewise. A reading to inspire our living and our remembering. Our scripture today is so familiar that we may have overlooked the importance of this message. After telling the tale of the Good Samaritan, Jesus turns to the person who has questioned him and asks, of the three in this story, who was the neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The questioner answered, well, the one who showed mercy. 
And Jesus tells him, go and do likewise. Now for me, there are three takeaways to this story. First, my neighbor isn't just the person who lives next door to me or the person in my neighborhood. Indeed, that neighbor could be someone I don't know. Second, when I help a neighbor, there's a potential pay forward. My neighbors may themselves reach out to help someone else. Just look what's happened during these difficult times. Finally, helping a neighbor can be fraught with dangers, real or imagined. Fear can be the biggest block to showing mercy. But fear can also be countered with resolve. Resolve to provide a helping hand despite the dangers ahead. As a country and as individuals, we understand this. Canadians have always practiced it. It started long before Canada was a nation. In the early communities, it was essential that we counted on each other. But we also counted on our neighbors on whose lands we developed and settled. Our indigenous neighbors showed us how to survive and thrive in this new world. Sadly, in later years, we forgot and abused those very neighbors who helped us so unselflessly. As a nation, we have held out our hand of friendship and support to our friends of the South. We have always been constant, reliable, and supportive neighbors to our American cousins. Now this hasn't meant that there hasn't been any rough patches that we've had to go through or disputes, but like good neighbors, we have always found a way to maintain our relationships. Just as in the parable, we also understand that helping our neighbors is not easy. We struggle to bring comfort and love to our relationships. But it can mean sacrifices on our parts. We are here today to recognize how much we have sacrificed to help our neighbors through times of oppression, conflict, and war. As individuals, we have left home to help our neighbors during such conflicts as the American Civil War, the Boer War, and the Spanish Civil War, to name a few. As a nation, we have contributed to international conflict on a scale which was quite unimaginable. The Great War, World War II, Korea, Somalia, Bosnia, Kuwait, Iraq, Afghanistan. As a nation, we have also offered alternatives to war. Prime Minister Lester B. Pearson received a Nobel Prize for peace for his concept of a multinational armed force under the United Nations to act as buffers between two competitive groups. What an ironic twist, using soldiers to prevent war. In this role, we have traveled to places such as Egypt, Cyprus, the Golan Heights, Southeast Asia, Africa, armed only with goodwill and a resolve to succeed, we brought, if not peace, at least a detente and de-escalated tensions. But in all of these and many other actions, our sons and daughters gave everything they had for their neighbors. Some came home unscathed, some were broken. Others never came back at all. Today especially, we pay tribute to those who have gone to help their neighbors, our soldiers, airmen and sailors, police officers, firefighters, paramedics, even linemen. 
We also honor those who have remained at home and have comforted those who waited for loved ones to return. Remember Me, The Voice of the Dead, a poem by Harry Riley. Remember me. Duty called and I went to war, though I'd never fired a gun before. I paid the price for your new day as all of my dreams were blown away. Remember me. We all stood true as whistles blew and faced the shell and stench of hell. Now battle's done, there is no sound. Our bones decay beneath the ground. We cannot see or smell or hear. There is no death, nor hope, nor fear. Remember me. Once we, like you, would laugh and talk and run and walk and do the things that you all do. But now we lie in rows so neat beneath the soil, beneath your feet. Remember me. In mud and gore and the blood of war, we fought and fell and move no more. Remember me. I am not dead. I am just a voice within your head. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.